He came into office seeking to mirror his charismatic predecessor and mentor Hugo Chavez. But three years after the death of Mr. Chavez, and with his country sinking deeper into an economic crisis, Nicolas Maduro's loyalty to the former leader may now be his greatest liability. Venezuela's economy is in shambles, in part because Mr. Maduro has doubled down on the same policies, something that some economists suggest has contributed to a recession, soaring inflation, and a shortage of basic goods. Later, we'll talk to several scholars about the challenges facing Venezuela. But we begin in Caracas with CCTV's Michael Voss. And Michael, I guess the best place to start is to simply ask, what happened? How did we get here? It was the collapse in oil prices which triggered this economic crisis. Venezuela has some of the world's largest reserves and depends almost exclusively on oil exports for its foreign currency earnings. At the same time, it has an extremely expensive subsidized social welfare program. But as to the severity of the crisis, with triple-digit inflation, the highest in the world, and severe shortages of food and medicines, opinions are divided. Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, says it's a conspiracy by the opposition, private businesses, and the U.S. to destabilize the country and overthrow his Bolivarian revolution. The opposition say it's economic mismanagement and corruption, and they blame it on the pro program of nationalizations and strict price and currency controls. What is sure, is, though, is that on the streets there's growing frustration and anger at people having to queue for hours in the hope of finding something on the supermarket shelves. Right, Michael, as we heard, there's opposition to President Maduro. Students and uh, others have taken to the streets. Some of these protests have turned violent, and Enrique Capriles, the opposition leader who twice ran for president, has said that Maduro is putting himself above the Constitution by issuing an emergency decree. Capriles is, is calling for a referendum on whether to remove Maduro from office. Uh, will any of this have any impact? Well, he isn't just calling for a referendum. Last month, the opposition handed in almost two million signatures, more than enough to constitutionally trigger a recall referendum process until now. The government has said it doesn't recognize this. It's an option, not an obligation. The opposition have been calling weekly demonstrations and marches on the National Electoral Commission, only to be met by uh, riot police and tear gas. The timing of the referendum is the key. If it were to take place before January the 10th next year, then if President Maduro were to lose, it would automatically trigger a fresh presidential election. If it takes place after that, then the vice president would step in and the ruling party would be able to continue to, to see out its term for the remaining two years. Thanks, Michael. That's CCTV's Michael Voss reporting from Caracas in Venezuela. Joining us from Los Angeles to talk about all this is Miguel Tinker Salas. He's a professor of Latin American history at Pomona College and the author of Venezuela, What Everyone Needs to Know. With us from Hamburg, Germany, is Anna Soliste Stange. She's a research fellow at the JIGA Institute of Latin American Studies. And Victor Gao is the director of the China National Association of International Studies. He joins us from Beijing. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Victor, let me start with you. What do you believe is the root cause uh, of Venezuela's economic problems? I mean, here we have a country which is one of the world's largest producers of oil, and it can barely pay for basics like rice, flour, milk. We know oil uh, Venezuela right now is going through a very traumatic uh, economic and financial crisis. And I would say that while uh, there are fundamental uh, problems in the uh, economic structure in Venezuela, uh, the most important reason is actually the uh, sharp decline in oil prices. And not only Venezuela is affected, uh, other major oil exporting countries in the world are also affected. Even uh, the largest uh, oil producer, uh, Saudi Arabia, is also affected in this regard. And Saudi Arabia government is talking about repositioning the economy for Saudi Arabia in the coming decades. Therefore, I would say for Venezuela, the oil price decline is taking a big, big bite. And also, this helps 
uh, reveal all the other problems in the economic structure in Venezuela. Combining all these factors together, that explains why uh, Venezuela is going through so much pain, and there doesn't seem to be any light on the horizon. And I think uh, the situation may even go uh, become worse before it gets better. Fortunately, oil prices are going up slightly. It's hovering around fifty dollars per barrel, and uh, if it can be sustained or even further increased, hopefully the challenges that Venezuela is faced with can be less severe, and hopefully it will help Venezuela government and people tide through this very painful process. Anna, there are shortages of food in Venezuela. The economy is expected to contract by uh, something like 8 percent, and inflation next year is projected to be around 1,200 percent. What is your assessment of what has gone wrong in Venezuela? Well, in Venezuela, we have first this economical problem, no, and with the inflation. But we have also another uh, big problem. We have insecurity. We have the uh, they cannot uh, have the goods. They have problem with the healthcare system, and the economy is not. Uh, we cannot say that it will be better. Uh, probably they need to change uh, completely the, the model. And for that, we need to, to see in Venezuela a transition, political transition. Miguel, what is your view on this? Is it oil prices or it is a combination of oil prices and political problems in Venezuela that's caused this? Well, I think it's a multi-pronged set of problems. First is the dependence on oil. And let me add, the kind of oil Venezuela has makes it uncompetitive at many levels in the world market. It has heavy crude, which means that its production cost is about $22, $23 a barrel. For that, it has to import light crude to mix with heavy crude to be able to sell. So if its price point is that high and oil is at $38 or $40 a barrel for the kind of oil Venezuela has, it means it's not making as much money. So it's seen a 70% decline in revenue. Uh, in 1935, when Venezuela became the world's leading exporter of oil, it also became a net importer of food. Uh, Venezuela is a highly urbanized country. 93% of the population live in urban areas, which means it imports most of its food. So a decline of revenue from $65 billion to about $25 billion means that it's importing less food, therefore heightening the question of the internal crisis. And the third prong is, has to do with the fact that it depends on water for hydroelectric, and it hasn't rained in Venezuela in three years, which means there's an electrical shortage as well. And then there are political issues uh, and a, a political model that needs reforming. Victor, what do you make of Anna's point that it's not just the drop in oil prices that have caused these problems in Venezuela, that the country also needs a completely new economic or rather political model? Um, I agree with this assessment, whether it is a uh, a uh, new political model that is required, or a new way of doing business, or a new growth paradigm, that's uh, we can discuss and debate. Uh, I would say, fundamentally, this over-dependence on oil and the government having the habit of dipping into the oil revenue to do all kinds of social projects eventually uh, caused the uncompetitiveness of the other sectors in Venezuela and the dependence of the population on social welfare and government-initiated policies. All this need to be readjusted. Fundamentally, I would say, using Deng Xiaoping saying when China started to reform and open into the outside world, growth or development is the hard truth. You cannot really fundamentally improve the prospect, economically speaking or financially speaking, of a country without a solid base of growth and development. For Venezuela, actually, it is blessed with lots of natural resources, and the uh, people actually can be more encouraged to achieve higher level of industrialization and engage in high-tech uh, production, for example, and there are many other businesses that Venezuela can be encouraged to engage in. Infrastructure can be further improved, productivity can be further improved, etc. Fundamentally, I think Venezuela needs a new development model. Further, I would say, in international politics, it will be better if 
Venezuela can deal with all the other countries as friends or on a friendly basis, rather than, you know, picking sides and alienate itself against other major economies in the world. Uh, to really grow the economy in Venezuela, Venezuela will need political stability, but also international stability. And I think the government in Venezuela can take all these factors into consideration now that the economy in Venezuela is being hit by this major crisis. And in Chinese, we always call a crisis as a combination of crisis and opportunity. So this crisis actually is providing a good soul-searching opportunity for the people and the government in Venezuela. So they hopefully eventually will use their wisdom and work closely with the creditor nations and the international community at large to come up with a better growth paradigm suited to the specific circumstances prevailing in Venezuela. Growth is the outcome for Venezuela to get out of this great crisis. Anna, where does President Nicolas Maduro's political support come from? Oh, well, um, there in Venezuela, it's difficult to say, OK, where are the support, uh, uh, who are the opposition? Inside in the government, we have also different group that they have a problem. In the opposition, we talk about the opposition, but who are really the opposition? We have also different uh, groups. In, but the Maduro government ha have also people that mainly uh, support, that mainly are the people that first uh, support Hugo Chavez that the people that receive and benef uh, several benefits from these social um, programs. But they are also people that cannot uh, benefit anymore. So the supporters, it is difficult to, to reply. We, if we see the, uh, now the, the, in the media, OK, if they call, recall for a referendum, they uh, show that Maduro will not uh, win. OK. Miguel, uh, according to Venezuela's central bank, the country's debt is something like $138 billion. Uh, are you confident that Venezuela will be able to pay this money back at some point? Venezuela has always prioritized repayment of its international debt. It has multiple assets, both in Europe and the U.S., which it can sell if it needs to, to pay the national debt. It also has internal assets, and it also continues to produce oil, and it can expand its production of oil. But the larger question here is that any alternative growth factor within Venezuela will unfortunately depend on oil. The, the ability to be able to diversify, the ability to be able to utilize this crisis, the ability to be able to to expand relations will depend on its ability to export oil because oil is the principal source of revenue for the country. No matter what government is in power, whether it's a right-wing government or a left-wing government, oil is the principal source. 95% of all foreign reserves come from oil, and although there's been efforts at diversification that include iron ore, that include minerals and other products, the reality is that oil is the, is the key to much of what happens in Venezuela. And in terms of its relationship with other countries in the region. Let's be clear, Venezuela has been targeted for regime change since 1999, uh, and it has nonetheless been uh, very cooperative in international relations, and in particularly in relations within Latin America. It has been a founder of the Union of South American Nation. It has been a founder of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean Nations. It has been a founder of the Bolivian Alliance for Latin America, so that in terms of its relations with Latin America and with the rest of the region, it has been very, very favorable. What it has done is resisted U.S. efforts at intervention, which we can trace back to 1998, to the 2002 coup, and to efforts to isolate Venezuela by declaring it a national security threat to the U.S. Victor, China and Venezuela are very close allies. Over the past decade, China has provided Venezuela with approximately $68 billion in loans. Are you confident that China will stand by its ally, and particularly the president, Nicolas Maduro? Well, I think uh, China-Venezuela relations are both very important to China and equally important 
to Venezuela. And this applies when the oil market is in good shape, for example, and the Venezuela economy is in a dynamic situation. But it also applies to the current situation where Venezuela is very much in economic crisis. And I hope China and Venezuela can remain very good partners and good friends. And the friendship between China and Venezuela will need to be tested in good times as well as bad times. And it is the bad time that we are talking about right now. And I hope China and Venezuela can sit down talk about the commercial arrangements, talk about how China can pitch in to help, and especially in terms of a new way of looking at the economic structure in Venezuela. After all, China is the only big, big country over the past 40 years or so which has managed to pull itself out of abject poverty, and now it is the second largest economy in the world. China is a very, very diversified economy, and in many, many sectors, China can actually share its experience share its expertise, share its manufacturing capacities with the people and the government in Venezuela. Therefore, I think how to restructure the indebtedness that Venezuela owns China is one technical thing. On the other hand, equally, if not much more importantly, is how Venezuela and China can continue to work together as partners and how China can help Venezuela to tie through this crisis and come up stronger as a winner of this crisis rather than being defeated by this crisis.